Welcome to the Cinch SPFL Scottish Football Roundup, bringing you all the best bits from an action-packed weekend in the Cinch Championship, League One and League Two. On this week's show, our both come from behind to beat Wraith Rovers in a Friday night epic at Gayfield. Ackies get back to winning ways and style with a 5-0 thrashing of Kelty Hearts. And Stenhouse Muir leave it late to secure victory against Bonnie Rig Rose. The weekend's football kicked off in Angus on Friday evening. Wraith looking bright in the opening exchanges, with Josh Mullen well denied by Derek Gaston. The hosts came into this one without a win since mid-December. Leighton McIntosh with some good movement, but unable to convert the finish. It took until just 26 minutes for the first goal to arrive. Zach Rudding keeping up his recent scoring run with an excellent finish for 1-0. The on-loan Dundee man with three goals in his last four appearances. Wraith were well on top in the first period and could have made it two here, but Lewis Vaughan was well kept out by Gaston. Chances kept on coming for Rovers, but Gaston continued to do enough to keep the scoreline down. But the second half would see Wraith double their advantage. A neatly worked attack in the 49th minute, with Vaughan's initial effort well blocked and Mullen there to nod home. The perfect start to the second half for Ian Murray's side. But after going two goals down, our both started to create more chances of their own. Jay Bird picking the ball up on the half turn on 61 minutes and pulling one back with a fine finish. With nine goals in all competitions, Bird has been a bright spark for our both this term. Wraith though weren't done attacking themselves and could have had a third goal had this strike from Kyle Turner crept in at the far post. In a hotly contested second half, the next goal was likely to prove pivotal. Our bros marks Stow with a dangerous cross on 69 minutes, which McIntosh was on hand to nod home. Brilliant positioning on show from the attacker to time his header to perfection. And from here, it looked as though the hosts were the most likely team to win it. Patient play in and around the box in the 77th minute, with Stow there to finish beyond Dabrowski for 3-2. An incredible turnaround and fantastic fighting spirit shown by the hosts. Wraith continued to press for a goal late into the game, but couldn't find a way through. Three massive points for the Lichties at Gayfield. Dunfermline welcomed Air United to East End Park on Saturday afternoon. The host going close to an excellent early goal when Chris Kane's neat flick dragged just past the post. It was one way traffic early on. The host with another promising attack, with Matty Todd just unable to squeeze the ball beyond Joshua Clark. Chances kept falling for Dunfermline, but the ball just wouldn't seem to go in the net. Malachi Fagan Walcott sending this one over the top. Ayr's first real chance of note would come through Jamie Murphy, the experienced winger creating space for himself but seeing his shot stopped by Dennis Mehmet. The game's first goal though would come just shy of the break, Chris Hamilton heading home a corner kick for Dunfermline on 42 minutes. Hamilton on target for the first time since early September. And from there, the Pars would go on to further strengthen their position before half-time. Striker Kane getting his first for the club in first half stoppage time. 
Kane taking advantage of a defensive error and providing a great finish. Into the second period and Dunfermline remained on top. The hosts with an indirect free kick, with the Pars players appealing that the strike from Lewis McCann had struck the hand of an air player. Air's chances were once again limited in the second half. This long range effort from Anton Dowds blazing well over the top of Mehmet's crossbar. Three big points for James McPake's side on home turf. The Cali Jags made the long trip to Greenock on Saturday afternoon, a journey which was made worthwhile in the first two minutes, Billy Mackay getting an early goal for the away side. Mackay's strike being his 110th in Cali colours. There were chances at both ends in a fairly balanced first half, Robbie Muirhead seeing this strike go straight into the hands of Mark Ridgers. But the second goal of the game would once again come for the away side. Sean McAllister curling home a well-struck free kick on 34 minutes. The Northern Irishman with his first goal for his new club. Chances continued to appear for Morton at the other end though. This volleyed effort from Robbie Crawford curling wide of the post. Cali pushed hard to add to their lead after the break. Mackay going close to grabbing his second, but Jamie McDonald doing well to deny the striker. Morton's next big opportunity would come to the head of midfielder Crawford, but again his effort was off target. The home side's hunt for a way back would continue right till the end of the game, but found themselves well kept out by a determined Cali defence. 2-0 Inverness, the final score at Capilo. Both sides came into this one on the back of excellent midweek wins. Queen's Park keeper Callum Ferry having to perform early heroics to deny Nikolai Todorov. Spider skipper Don Thomas has been in fine scoring form in recent weeks. He took advantage of some slack Airdrie passing to make it 1-0 after just 13 minutes. Thomas making it four goals from his last six outings. And it could have been 2-0 to the away side shortly after. A pinpoint cross being guided goalwards by Rory Payton, but crashing back off the outside of the post. Both sides looked lively in attack in this one. Airdrie creating a chance after neat play down the left, with Adam Frizzell's strike well smothered by Ferry. The hosts kept pushing for a leveller after the break. Some pinball in the Queen's Park box here, with Todorov's eventual strike going just wide of the mark. But Airdrie's persistence would eventually pay off left-back Mason Hancock going on a run in the 63rd minute and crashing a low strike into the bottom corner. An excellent finish from one of the championship's most exciting prospects. Queen's Park though were determined to take all three points from this one. Striker Payton will be disappointed he didn't make more of this excellent chance. And the Spiders would go even closer still towards the end. A well taken corner finding the head of Danny Wilson, who was kept out by the post. The spoil shared in a well fought encounter at the Excelsior. Two promotion hopefuls faced off at Fur Hill on Saturday. Brian Graham getting the Jags off to a flyer, nodding home at the back post in the third minute. The experienced striker extending his scoring run to five goals in his last four matches. Dundee United have plenty of exciting attackers in their ranks. 
Both Alex Grieve and Kai Fotheringham looked threatening early on, but neither could find the net. Harry Milne has cemented himself as one of the division's top fullbacks this season. He went close to scoring an outstanding second for Thistle in this one. And another fullback would go close to grabbing the headlines at the other end. Scott McMahon having to be kept out by a vital save from David Mitchell here. It was an end to end encounter in Glasgow. Lewis Nielsen going close to scoring a cracker with this first time effort. United would press hard for a leveller after the break. The away side working it well down the right, but a grieve strike well stopped by Mitchell. The away side continued to knock at the door, but Mitchell continued to stand firm. Louis Moult the next to be left frustrated by the keeper. But United's attacking play was relentless in the second half and was eventually rewarded on 67 minutes. Moult curling one beyond the reach of the keeper to level things up. Fourteen goals in all competitions, Moult has been an excellent signing for Jim Goodwin's side. It seemed as though United would be the most likely team to find a winner. The away side continuing to attack late into the game, but Thistle's defence hanging on for a point. It finished 1-1 at Fort Hill. Here's how things stand in the Sins Championship after a busy weekend of football. Dundee United gained a one-point gap at the top of the table after a point at Fort Hill. Dunfermline are now just five points behind 4th place Morton after their home win over Ayr, while the gap between 9th placed Inverness and 10th placed Arbroath remains seven points after both sides secured important wins. Hamill with the corner. Then it's a great serve by Gourley and it's a header, it's another early goal. Hamlin take the early lead. With the corner. It's in towards the back post and headed out. It's in, it should be an easy one, isn't it? It's, it's Hamilton. They take the 2 0 lead, nobody there in this six yard box. Babbage saved. Falkirk came into this one aiming for their fifth straight league win. 
the hosts almost going a goal up in the first minute, but Cal Morrison firing over the top. It was one-way traffic for large periods of the first half. Calvin Miller finding Ross McKeever with a neat cross, but the striker heading over. Falkirk's next big chance would fall the way of the inform Miller, but the winger saw his shot well beaten away by Jack Herity. Arguably the best chance of the first half would come to Aidan Nesbitt from a McKeever knockdown, but the midfielder couldn't find the target. Michael Nguyeni has continued to impress during his short stay with Annan, but he was unable to open the scoring with this headed effort. Falkirk maintained large periods of control after the break. Leon McCann finding McKeever with another smart cross, but the striker's header was too central. And shortly after, a big chance would come to the away side at the other end. More good work from Nguyeni, with the striker this time denied by Sam Long. But the breakthrough would eventually come for the hosts. Stephen McGinn's curling ball in 61 minutes, finding the run of Morrison, who squeezed the ball in beyond Herity. Morrison getting his 14th league goal of an impressive campaign. And the winger could have had another goal soon after. Neat play from Morrison to turn his man, but the strike well cut out by the outstretched leg of Tommy Muir. Annan though kept themselves in the game and would deliver a sucker punch deep into added time. A long throw not fully dealt with, with Muir eventually there to head home the latest of late equalisers. The Galabankis riding their luck, but getting the reward with a huge away point. Two of the division's promotion chasers faced off at Lynx Park on Saturday. Montrose getting off the blocks in double quick fashion, with Blair Lyons opening the scoring on seven minutes. The talented winger with his sixth league goal of the season. Alloa have been largely excellent in recent weeks. The Wasps going close to pulling a quick goal back through Curtis Roberts, but the midfielder firing over. But the equalising goal didn't take too long to arrive. 32 minutes on the clock, when Scott Taggart's strike was beaten into the path of Taylor Stephen, who turned it home. Stephen has been one of the division's standout performers in recent weeks. Stephen is a player full of confidence at the moment, the winger almost bagging another with this hit from the edge of the box. And Alawa would go even closer to scoring again shortly after. Ethan Sutherland popping up at the back post, but denied by the woodwork. But Sutherland's big moment in front of goal would eventually arrive. 45 minutes on the clock, when the teenager fired the ball beyond Cammy Gill for 2-1. A fantastic strike from the on-loan St Mirren youngster. The Wasps lead wouldn't last long though. Michael Gardine's floated free kick being bulleted home by Sean Dillon in first half stoppage time. The 40 year old on target for the first time this season. And after the break, Montrose would go on to overturn the deficit. Kane Hester making his presence felt in the Alloa box on 51 minutes and finding the bottom corner. 11 goals for the season now, for the summer signing from Elgin City. Montrose would go close to making it 4-2 soon after through neat play from Lions, but the winger couldn't beat PJ Morrison this time round. Alloa would be reduced to 10 men in the 59th minute. 
Midfielder Kevin Colley shown a straight red card by referee Duncan Williams for dissent. But despite being a man light, Alawa would level up the scores once more on 67 minutes. Bobby Wales with an excellent front post finish from a corner kick. Wales continues to go from strength to strength for the Wasps. And Alawa went close to making it 4-3 soon after. Connor Salmon seeing a header from a corner kick bounce back off the crossbar. But eventually Montrose would take advantage of the man advantage. Another Gardine free kick causing issues at the back for Alawa, with Graham Webster there to poke home in the 86th minute. A seemingly incredible finish to an outstanding game in Angus. But deep into added time, there would be one last chance for the Wasps. Goalkeeper Morrison going up for a corner kick and denied an incredible equaliser by a crucial header from Matthias Mikado. 4-3 the final score in a thriller at Lynx Park. Paul Hartley's Toonsers travel to Meadow Bank on Saturday afternoon. Fraser Fivey keeping City keeper Ruri Adams on his toes with this early effort. The home side could have taken the lead after good work from Malik Zaid in the first half, but Mamadou Sambu was unable to find the finish. The opening goal would come to the away side and it was an absolute cracker. Connor Scully curling home a beauty for Cove Rangers in the 15th minute. The Cove legend with his fifth in all competitions this term. And the midfielder would go close yet again soon after. Goalkeeper Adams doing well to keep out this goalbound effort. Cove kept on pushing for a second goal in the first half. Ramon Burrell the next player to be kept out by the City stopper. But the second goal for Cove would arrive shortly after the break. Mitch Meganson this time, with the striker heading home in the 50th minute. Meganson hitting double figures in all competitions with this header. There were chances at both ends in this one. The best of the lot coming for City attacker Sambu, who was unable to turn home from close range. Cove taking all three points in an impressive away display. Queens and Stirling aim to put distance between themselves in the relegation playoff spot on Saturday. The away side with the first real chance of note, but Jack Leach unable to find the net. Queens would get their first sight of goal in the sixth minute. Lee Connolly's cutback being guided into the path of Alex Ferguson, who knocked it home. An excellent start for the home side. The hosts would go close to making it two in the early going. Gavin Riley being well prevented by Blair Curry, with Connolly unable to convert on the follow-up. And it wouldn't take long for Sterling to spring a response. 27 minutes gone when Dale Carrick slid in Josh McPake to bring parity to the scoreline. With two goals in his first three appearances, McPake looks to be enjoying himself with the Beanos. And Sterling would be handed a huge chance to make it 2-1 before the break. Referee Scott Lambie pointing to the spot on 38 minutes for a foul on Carrick. and striker Carrick would step up to the plate, but saw his penalty well kept out by Harry Stone in the Queen's net. Into the second half, and Sterling continued to push for a second goal. McPake going close to doubling his tally, but just missing the mark. 
and the hosts would go on to find that next goal themselves on 65 minutes. Josh Todd firing home from a corner kick for 2-1. The experienced midfielder on target for the first time this season. With momentum on their side, Queens went hunting down a third goal. Substitute Harvey Walker firing this one just past the post. But Sterling remained well in the game and found a late leveller on 89 minutes. Carrick reacting quickest in the six yard box and firing beyond stone. Both sides more than worthy of a point in an entertaining encounter. Here's a look at the latest standings in Cinch League 1 after the weekend's football. Aki's 5-0 win at Kelty sees the gap between themselves and league leaders Falkirk reduced to 14 points. Montrose jump up to third place after their impressive 4-3 win over Alloa, whilst Cove Rangers are now just one point outside the playoffs after their 2-0 win at Meadow Bank. Here comes the throw, headed away by Young, back in by Yates, where it went down for Jameson, and now it's Aitken. Then Buchanan making strides at the back post, as is Jameson. Plenty to aim at for Yates. This is where Stennis Wick can really threaten. Down comes the header from Jameson at the back post. Aitken's header. Charlie Stewart doesn't fully get it clear now. Anderson, one for Berry. Here's the shot pushed away by Parry Martin. Back for Berry, just wide of the mark. Watson has Curry advancing. Watson gives it to Lee Curry. And what a block from Nicky Jameson. Here comes the corner. It's right on Parry Martin's head. And it's headed down and in at the back post by Matt Aitken. If it was going to be anybody, it was going to be him. Steny's main man, Matt Aitken, appears at the back post. Well cleared by Marcel with Brown. Brown lines up the shot. Harry Martin has to push that one behind for a Steny's near corner. Clyde welcomed Elgin to Hamilton, aiming to continue their recent good run of form. Liam Scullion with an early chance for Clyde, which was well stopped by Tom McHale. There were chances for both sides in the early going. Elgin going close through Russell Dingwall, with Ray Grant doing well to clean up the scraps. Dingwall though would turn provider on 34 minutes. Jake Dolzanski on hand to bullet home the midfielder's pinpoint corner kick. The defender grabbing his first goal of the season. Elgin would press hard to double their advantage after the break. Michael Dangana kept out by some vital last ditch defending from Clyde. But in a hotly contested game, it was only fitting that the next goal would be a leveller. 53 minutes gone when Jordan Allen picked out the top corner for the Bully Wee. A finely executed goal from the striker's left foot. And it wasn't long before Allen was troubling the Elgin backline once more. An excellent cross from Jay's Cabia finding the striker three minutes later, with Allen making it 2 1. The unknown Falkirk man seems to have rediscovered his best form with the Billy Wee. Elgin's goalscorer Delzanski would find himself walking a tightrope from the 72nd minute after he was booked for this foul on Cabia. 
and Delzanski was almost the hero once more for the black and whites. His diving header having to be scrambled off the line from the Clyde defence to keep it at 2-1. But the afternoon would end in disappointment for the Elgin defender. Dolzanski shown a second yellow and subsequent red for this fill in stoppage time. 2-1 Clyde the final score at New Douglas Park. Linus with the throw, he does go long. And it's a header! Oh. Off grey! Lennon inside to Wallace. I think Rory McAllister took a sore one in the quiche still there for Arn Linus winning that header against him. Linus done fantastic, but didn't he? And Finlay Gray does fantastic with the turn. It's Gray with the shot. Ball went into the hands of McKenzie. With a good save. He swings it in. It's picked up by Blair who shoots. And over the bar. Uses shanks. Plays into McCarthy. Inside to McKee, McKee just in the edge of the box. The shot, still got it, McKee with another shot. And off the head. Just took quick. Goldie, misplaced, Ruth driving in. Michael Ruth! And just in the wrong goal there by Michael Ruth. As it's David Wilson with the shot. And a great save by McKenzie. And goes out for a Dumbarton. Corner. Way by Armstrong. Up by Newbury. Linus even. Nobody now heads it forward. Michael Ruth Tusson for it. Ruth. Still got it. Michael Ruth with a shot. Ruth! Great goal by Michael Ruth. Dumbarton won. Peter Head now. Just what the Dumbarton were looking for. Picked up by Pinitello. Pinitello skips by Goldie. Pinitello. He's got Wallace. Wallace driving forward. Still got it. Wallace. Chops it. Tony Wallace with a shot. And a good save by Stuart McKenzie. Gives it to McKee. McKee first time crossed in. Crichton does really well. And it's still kept alive though. Richie, away by Gallagher. Strachan! And Strachan over the bar. Dumbarton got away with one there. Spartans aim to make it three wins on the bounce as they welcomed East Fife to Edinburgh. The home side with a lightning quick start as Cammy Russell fired them into the lead inside four minutes. Russell has consistently been one of the division's top performers this term. Russell continued to lead the charge as Spartans hunted down a second goal, but East Fife stood firm this time round. An equalising goal wasn't long in arriving for Dick Campbell's East Fife. 23 minutes gone when Alan Troughton turned the ball home from close range. The veteran forward continues to be a persistent goal threat for the Fifers. East Fife pressed hard for the lead before half time. Some last ditch defending required from Spartans to keep the ball out the net in this exchange. Into the second half though, and the Fifers would find that all-important goal. Nathan Austin pouncing upon a slack back pass to slot home for 2-1 in the 56th minute. Austin bagging his 14th in all competitions for the Bayview side this season. And there would be another goal to come for the away side before time. Blair Carswell getting a hand to Scott Shepard's effort in the 85th minute but Trout in there to poke the ball over the line. Three points and an excellent away display from the men from Methyl. Is that one going out? No. no. Ross keeps it in, gets it to, to Forrest. Forrest being watched by Whatley. Oh, oh, danger here. Dylan Forrest, loose him. ball. And that's a cracking save by Buda now because no, Forrest's ball back to Govan. Yeah, it is Not too a much. great ball. Scott Robertson coming up into the stand. We could do with him on the park. Yeah. So, Seb Ross with the corner. Hecropod oh, meets it in the near post, but that is oh, another top draw save. Unfortunately, he landed right at the boys' uh, foot. But 37th minute, Johnson with the corner, swings it into the box. 
Matty Grant. Oh, oh. and it's punched away by It was, a, it was, a, it was by a great, great wee shot. It was Matty a very Anthony. decent shot. He's yeah. on target. Okay, Gross Johnson hurdles it forward. Oh, Armour does well to, to get that. Oh, he's away the wrong way. Oh. And the referee gives well, that a, one. It's a foul, professional It's a booking, foul. yeah. Yeah. Free kick, actually. Yeah. Ross kicks it on out. Forrest Fleming plays it back in. Oh. And Kyle Govan yep. has a header on target. It's headed down. Matty, ah, Matty Grant just couldn't get anything on that there. Pressure back on. Back out as far as Craig Ross. Oh, Ross through. Ball. Matty Grant. The box slides oh, across. What a save. Mark McCallum does brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good pressing there. And ooh, Kyle Fleming. Now That'll Morrison's be already been. He'll be off. Yep. Yeah. Should be off. Yeah, he's off. He's off the yeah. park. That will be a red card for yeah. Stuart Morris, and he's already been booked in the first half. Yeah. Seventy-fifth minute. Now, Forrest along oh, the deck to Johnson's onside. onside. Oh, through to Matty Grant. Oh, and McCallum does well to block that. I've and that's that. blocked by Dylan Lobin. Oh, I had to score. Lobin's first involvement in the game is crucial to block a shot there. McCallum did well yeah. to block Matty Grant. <laughs> Now to check in on how things stand in Cinch League 2 after the weekend's action. Stenhouse Muir's win at Bonnie Rig has the Warriors 17 points clear at the top of the table. Dumbarton are now just one point behind second placed Peterhead after their win at The Rock. And Clyde have reduced the gap between themselves and ninth place Stranraer to just three points after their recent upturn in form.